Hey everybody, Dr. Joel Parker bringing you Whiteboard Wednesdays live from Veterinary Practice Solutions. This week we're going to be talking about choosing team leaders and I wrote up here effective team leaders. Often than not what happens in a practice is that we choose a person to become the office manager or technically a team leader just because they've been there the longest time. We hire by tenure. The problem with that is that that person could be an extremely effective technical person. They could be an extremely effective receptionist. They could be the best person to handle shopper calls. They could be an extremely effective uh, technician in the back that is awesome at putting in catheters. You know, they can, they can flick a catheter in from 20 yards in the most fractious cat and so forth. And then we make them a team leader. And because they're never trained exactly or because maybe they don't have a natural um, a like or affinity for people, uh, they actually don't actually lead people. They actually end up just doing all the work themselves. So the, the thing to clarify here is that a team leader is actually a person uh, ideally who is extremely competent in their field. That's why I like technicians who have been there a long time to become a team leader because maybe they're tired of doing dentistry. They've done it for 10 or 12 years, for example. But the, the important thing is, is that they really need to like people because their job switches from doing the technical work themselves to actually training and coaching and mentoring others. You know, the chief role of a team leader is to organize the area and make sure that your people are trained below you. And your time, half your time every week is spent on training people. We'll talk about more formal things and how you actually train them. But think about that. Half your time as a team leader is going to be spent doing your technical job, whether that's uh, doing kennels in the back, or whether that's being a veterinarian or technician, or, an, or a receptionist, or a bookkeeper. The other time is going to be spent leading your team of people. So what can happen if we choose people who don't necessarily like people, who don't necessarily have great communication people skills, and we make them team leaders, what happens is that they don't lead the team, they don't push the team to greatness, uh, they don't take a a good staff member and make a great staff member out of them, they end up doing the work themselves. And because they're not managing the staff, because they're not there actively leading the, uh, the weekly staff meetings and so forth, the problems of the staff will skip over that leader and they'll go on to your line as the, as the owner of the practice. The way to start creating an owner-independent practice, one that begins running independently of you, is to create a strata, excuse me, a strata of team leaders. Not just one, but a strata of three team leaders in your practice. So the question is, where are you going to find these people? They've got to have a combination of technical competency and they've got to be very, very good with good people skills. The problem is if you take a technical person and if they go down into the negative bands like trying to, mandle, uh, trying to manage people with anger and with force and you know all things like that, the problem is it doesn't work. A team leader has to have this wonderful combination of what I call friendly bossiness. They've got to be super friendly and at the same time not have any uh, back off on so of bossing somebody around and getting them to do something, but in a really friendly way. So think about it. That might have been your older sister or older brother. Uh, what's interesting is oftentimes a good team leader is a young person. One of the best examples was one of our clients whose daughter-in-law used to run the practice when she was 14 years of age. 14. And she'd come in and she'd boss her dad around. She'd say, okay, mom, dad, you're going to get in that room there and in that room there and you can't talk very long. I'm going to come in and flash the lights. Okay, and so forth. Then he'd just go along with it. It was very, very, it was very cute because she had this wonderful little English accent, very great girl. Now what's interesting is that she showed good executive prowess, good leader prowess, good effective leadership skills because she got him to do things, she got other people to do things in a very friendly way. She didn't upset anybody. That person went on now is a very, very uh, good, a, a very high position in a major IT company uh, in Europe. She's a very, very effective uh, executive but she showed that at 14 years of age. So hiring effective team leaders, you know, ideally you're going to hire them from within. Okay, because they know your practice and they can get others then to do things. They can take over the training and so forth. But the problem is if you can't find anybody with appropriate executive skills, you've got, that, you've got to then go uh, you know, to Craigslist and so forth and hire from out, what, outside. That being said, there are many people that have possibly managed uh, veterinary offices, doctor's offices, radiology offices, and so forth that could come in and help you with yours. But, they, but their problem then is if you're hiring from outside, they've got to get to know the position. They've got to go and they've probably got to spend some time on reception. They've got to be able to do every single thing below them that they're teaching others to do or it doesn't work. So when you're looking at 
first of all, ideally, you're going to hire within. You've got a person that's been doing the job for a long time. They're highly organized. They're very policy and procedure driven because the trick on training people is off of written materials and videos. So ideally, you're going to hire within. If you've got an executive, excuse me, if you've got a technician at the moment, for example, that is not being a good executive and you've got staff problems coming onto your lines, you may have to say, I'm sorry, it's not working out as a team leader, as an executive. Let's get you back being a technician that you're fantastic at because I don't want to lose you there and let's find somebody else that can run the back and do the training. Sometimes you have to reverse but it's nicer if you can work out you know bring a person in uh, you can see that other staff respect them and that they're friendly they're friendly bossy uh, and then you can promote them up to be an executive. Keynote on that do not pay your executives more until they are trained and they're taking things off your hats off your plate and freeing up your time. So basically Basically, you're going to promote them to, let's say, you know, the deputy medical director, and while they're learning what you're doing, and then when they can finally prove that they're doing it, then you're going to pay them more. If you can't do that, hire from outside, then you've got other challenges. So hopefully that helps. We want effective team leaders so that they can take the work off you. Uh, that's all we got today for Whiteboard Wednesdays. See you next week. Thanks a lot.